What's up everybody, chilling here at the ARC conference, is that what it's called? Yeah. I'm the pastors and big dogs, I feel intimidated. Que la gente sienta la esperanza y el poder del Espíritu Santo llenando su alma en este día. Yo oro en este día. Dios, que tengan una alma, alma de la ciudad. Sí, sí, sí. Alma de la ciudad. So for those of you who don't know what we're doing here, we're here at the conference, yes, and we got him for free, we got blessed. But we were kind of with staff and we were translating. So you guys just saw Eman translating. It's me, uh, Eric's here, and Donnie's here. They're in the service inside, but we're here in the translating room. <laughs> hey, Christine Kane said, I'm not the best, but I was available. So being analytical, I went back to the Bible looking for answers. And time and time again, I saw that God used very ordinary people to do the miraculous. There was no limit to, to what he would do to save his children. So as with all deep matters of theology, I was sharing this with my hairdresser. And, uh, she's a Christian, grew up in the church, went to private Christian school. And I asked her, as I'm pondering these thoughts, why don't we believe for these kind of miracles anymore? And she said, well, maybe not literally like the Bible. And it dawned on me, we read these stories like they're fairy tales when they're meant to be used as, as examples of what God can do with us today. So, okay, God, I get it, it's our fault. Okay, God, I truly believe you can do whatever with whoever. But still, what does that look like? Well, through a series of revelations, God showed me that all he needs is our willingness. Because if you look at the size of the body of Christ and the number of churches in the world, we are not outnumbered. These problems are not bigger than us, right? So the night of all that's going on, the chaos, the politics, the fighting, the injustices, you might think, well, it's the government's job to feed the hungry. Well, can I tell you, when the, when the government's fed, they've simply fed. And when we as a body of Christ come to with a reason to live, a hope for tomorrow, the promises of God, healing and eternal salvation. And maybe you think, well, it's the government's job to educate. Well, can I tell you, for every adult that I've met who can't read, there's a story behind it. Mm. And they were deprived of so much more than education. I'm here with nothing but big dogs. I'm honored and blessed to be around these men. Big dog number one. Pig dog number, number two. Number three. Because number two is on the other side of that camera right now. No. Where's he at? Unless I have agreed from you. And so for 40 days, I, I prayed. I fasted. I went up on a little plateau on the side of Prayer Mountain behind our church where my dad for years wore out a rut, pacing back and forth, looking over the city. I spent time up there. And when I came out of that 40 day period, I stood before the church and I said, this is the dream that God has given us. Right now, we're 2000, we are, it's 2013, and uh, our church is 90 years old. We are, in, in 10 years, we are gonna be 100 years old. 2023, we're gonna be 100 years old. What is our church gonna look like in 2023? 
I laid out five things that God showed me in the mountain. Number one, he said, um, we're going to reach uh, 50,000 people with the gospel of Jesus Christ in our city. Not just reach them, but add them to our church. In 2023, we're going to be running on weekend services, 50,000 people. I didn't know how that was going to happen. We had one campus at the time. We didn't see a lot of people, 5,000 people. That's like 10 services a weekend. I'm thinking, how's that going to happen? But I believed it. And we're going to, we're going to reach people for Jesus in our city. Number two, we are going to become the arts hub of Arizona. In other words, when people think of the great Broadway musical programs in Arizona, they're not going to think of ASU and Gambage. Uh, you know, we, we see Phil around the roof and Phantom of the Opera and all these beautiful musicals. They're happening within the arts department of our church in Arizona. We already had do a Christmas production every year with 16 performances. You know, about 60,000 people see it every Christmas time. So we're already kind of known for that in the city. We were, we were already strong at that. Number three, I said we're going to train 100,000 leaders on this campus to go into the world and preach the gospel through our dream conference in February for the next 10 years. Number four, I said we are going to be debt-free by the year of 2023. My dad built a lot of buildings over the year. We had some debt that we inherited, and we are going to be debt-free by the year of 2023. And I said we're also going to build on, while we're becoming debt-free, about an $8 million expansion uh, to the front of our church, new children's facilities, the brand new lobby, all that. So um, we laid that from the church. I said, listen, in, in eight weeks, we are going to take what I'm going to call the miracle offering because we're, we won't be debt free if we borrow eight, eight million more dollars to build this. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to make our mortgage payments and in 10 years, we will be debt free if we keep making our mortgage payments. And then every year, we're going to take a miracle offering in October. And uh, we're going to build this new facility by taking that miracle offering. Well, I don't live in the pastor for a few months. This is a, and we've just been building buildings for years. You know, I don't know how people would respond. But wait, eight weeks later, we took our first miracle offering, and that church gave one point nine million dollars in that first miracle offering. And I said, "Praise the Lord! You're behind this second year miracle offering. We brought in one point seven million. Third year, we brought in one point five million. The building out front of our of our church." We're opening that new building in just four weeks. It's completed. It's done. So we just went and finished the workshop with Tommy Barnett and Luke Barnett, huh? Luke Barnett, yeah. Dude, I'm so blind. I kid you not, I couldn't see their faces. I need glasses, bro. I need your glasses. Look who's coming. We got the star himself. So Martinez. Oh, I'm saying Donnie Mo Marillo. Oh, Donnie. Donnie Marillo. Oh, yeah. No? I said, look, dude, I said, everyone here looks like the Osh Shop at Forever 21. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're killing it, dude. Like, oh, specially made. They need to be redone. They kind of do. And then I you said, warm a lot. I do. And then I said, and I started, like, look, I started, I started putting my camera on people. And I'm like, I didn't get the skinny jeans memo with the rib, <laughs> the rib knees. <laughs> this guy did look. Oh, you guys don't even want to see mine tomorrow. Yeah, this is the youth room. If you're into that big building, cool stuff. It's dope, huh? The lounge. The jacket is cerveza ahí. The pool table. This is better than LADI. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> I don't have something like The youth room here. Bigger than my church. You know it's not a vlog until there's food in here. Not lengua, food. Oh.